Hi, this is Alana. Welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. And thank you so much for joining us. Jamie and I are really excited because we are coming out with a brand new resource for you. It is the Praying Christian Women Breakfast Cereal. <laughs> Just kidding. She thought it would be fun to do like an April Fool's um, joke for you guys. And I'm like, well, what could we do? And she's like, we could tell them that we're becoming a cereal. And so... <laughs> Uh, April Fools. I think that both of us like laughing our heads off is uh, probably a dead giveaway right from the get go. <laughs> yes. If you see tears in my eyes, it's not emotion because of our heavy topic. <laughs> yeah. For those of you who don't know, Jamie and I have a ton of fun doing these episodes and working on this podcast. And we just want to thank you for being with us on the ride because it's really not very fun to do a podcast for just two people. So as fun as as much fun as we do have, you guys make it worthwhile. So thanks for putting up with our goofy antics every so often. <laughs> we have a coffee break episode today. So grab your coffee, your tea, your water, your, uh, your non-alcoholic beer. No, I'm joking. Um, yeah, come join us today. We're just, we've been recording all morning, so we're both kind of goofy right now. So <laughs> disclaimer, I guess it's good that this is our April Fool's, right? <laughs> yeah, a little um, fun and joking is, is expected. Yes. I do have, so, can I, can I share something yes, real quick? Absolutely. Okay. So I have a really funny story just to remember my mom. My mom was like kind of serious in some ways, but she was a practical joker. And so on April Fool's, I can't remember how old I was, but uh, I must have been like maybe seven or eight or nine. I don't know. Anyway, I, I kind of heard a thump upstairs. I was downstairs in the basement doing some homework and I didn't think much of it and I keep doing my homework. Then I hear this little thump again, but I, I'm just not thinking much of it. So finally I hear I, my mom comes down like stomping down the stairs like she's mad and she's like, well, I'm just really glad that nothing bad happened to me because you wouldn't come up to check on me in the first place. She's like, I just spent, it was April Fool's and she loved to do pranks. Oh. I was upstairs stomping on the ground so you'd think I'd fallen and oh. I laid there waiting for you to come and find me. Oh. So anyway, she was afraid that, well, what if I did fall? You wouldn't come up anyway. So, but it was just That's hilarious. Like, like just one of my kind of, I guess it's all right. Well, we symptom. are doing a coffee break episode today where we're taking your questions. So today we are going to be discussing, um, what are we discussing? Being mechanical in prayer. Just Okay, so we're back. If there was a glitch, we apologize for that. But we're going to go ahead and open this discussion on prayer with a word of prayer. God, we just thank you for this day and for this time to come together and talk about making prayer less mechanical, um, making it exciting. And we just ask that you would be present here, Lord, in this conversation, that you would give us everything that we need to just have a fun discussion about making prayer more fun. And we just thank you so much for this time with our listeners and just being able to talk about ways to draw closer to you, Lord. That's what it's all about. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So before we dig into today's question, we just want to remind you that if you have questions about prayer topics that you would love for us to cover in one of our Coffee Break episodes, you can submit those at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. We are offering this up, not because we have the answers, but because we really love diving deep. And I feel like something really neat happening in the podcast right now is like we are getting to go into some of the deeper things about prayer and you know, some of the things that not even all Christians agree on, or maybe the Bible's not super clear on, but we're able to discuss those things, not because we're experts, but just, I feel like, you know, Jamie and I both have a science background and just really like digging into some of the nuances of it and stuff like that. So again, go ahead and submit your questions to prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions so that we can do more of these coffee break episodes, which I don't know, I, I feel like they're just a really fun, um, fun way to connect and like hear what's on our listeners' minds and also just a nice little break from our more um, topic-driven episodes. 
I think so too. And I think that um, if you have a question about prayer, chances are lots of other people are just going to be Good point. Like, yes, I have that question too. I didn't think anyone else asked that. So yeah. So Jamie, am I the only one in this partnership who sometimes wants to submit anonymous questions to our own like I website? I thought about that today. <laughs> I, I think I did today too. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't done it yet, but you know, if you get an anonymous, every once in a while, we will cover questions that don't have a name attached. But if you get an anonymous listener, it might just be Alana or myself submitting <laughs> a question. So what if it's a question like, I've got a question of how to work on a podcast with someone that I really can't stand. How do you support <laughs> with her? Like, Theoretically. Yeah. Hypothetically. Yeah. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. Uh, what is so your today's name? question is not anonymous or is it? No, it's not. And unfortunately, I don't know how to pronounce your name, but I think it's Temi Lolu. Temi Lolu. The beautiful I name. I just, yeah, that's how I would say it. Temi Lolu. And um, her question is, one question I have is to is how to stop prayer from being mechanical. And immediately what I thought is, you know, how do you spice up your prayer life? That's really kind of the mm -hmm. crux of it, I think. How do you keep it from being mechanical? Because you know, if they're, if you're trying to pray for a lot of people, if you're listening to this podcast, you're a woman of prayer and you like praying for people and you're trying to be as thorough as you can. And so I think it can become mechanical at times. Yeah. So how do we make it more fun? How do we make it exciting? Well, let's, let's move back just a tiny bit and ask ourselves, like, is that the goal? Like, should we, should we make prayer fun? Like, should we spice up our prayer life or should we just pray because, we're supposed to pray. Do you know what I mean? No. And that's a very good question. And it brings me to like, um, I think it was John Piper that wrote uh, Desiring God, where he yeah. talks about Christian hedonism. Yeah. And I just love that concept because sometimes we do feel like, well, you have to pray. You just have to, if you're a good Christian, you have to pray. And his other side of the coin is, well, yeah, we do need to pray, you know, and he didn't say this about prayer specifically, but right. yes, we need to pursue a relationship with God, but God created us to desire and to enjoy. And so he sort of, um, shifted or reworded the Westminster catechism where it says, you know, what's the chief end of man? It's right. To, glorify God and to enjoy and God and glorify, glorify him, him forever. forever. But it's like, but to, to glorify God by enjoying yeah. him forever is how he shifts that, I guess. Right. 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 I think but, the original is glorify God and enjoy him forever. Right. And so he's like, yeah. it glorifies God when we enjoy communing with him. Good point. So I think it's, as always, we've got the two-sided thing here where you've got the balance. You know, you could go too far and pursue fun prayer just for the sake of fun. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, if churches are reaching out for new people, they could make the church um, service like, you know, a designer imposters for a rock show right. just for the sake of that. Or maybe you've got some people that are amazingly gifted uh, worship leaders and it ends up being a professional looking thing and, mm -hmm. and they're enjoying God, you know? So right. are you just going to want to spice up your prayer life so that you'll be happy and entertained? That's not the reason. But if your prayer life feels boring, something is wrong. And maybe we need to find out how we can connect more with God. And sometimes that involves shaking things up a little bit. I think that is so well said. I really, yeah, I, I like drawing kind of some of Piper's, um, some of his philosophy into that because yeah, the, the goal isn't necessarily to have fun praying, but you know, we should feel engaged. We should feel joyful and yeah, it's hard to maintain a growing and vibrant prayer life when it feels like you're just saying the same thing every single day. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So how do we get from, you know, I, I kind of, equate it to like flossing your teeth. It's like, yeah, I know I got to do it, but who really likes to floss? You know, like either you do it because you have to, or you don't do it and you feel guilty. <laughs> like, I feel like a lot of people treat prayer and those are options. You either do it because you have to, or you don't do it and you feel bad. Well, I think one of the questions that we need to look at is, or just one of the issues is there's a spectrum of prayer and there's balance to be struck in prayer. And so you know, one thing to maybe look at is if you're feeling like your prayer life is mechanical, 
um, maybe you can look at whether or not your, uh, your prayer life is out of balance. So it might be that, um, you know, in the spectrum of prayer, that you're feeling mechanical because you have either just a really organized prayer life and you're praying down a bullet list, um, or, you know, that you're not a spontaneous prayer normally, and so you're praying regularly and very effectively and efficiently, but you just kind of feel like you're going through the same names over and over again. And so um, one of the things I think is really one of my favorite sessions in our um, Smash Your Prayer Blocks online retreat is um, we have this entire session on balance in prayer, and it does talk about those imbalances. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in that, you can go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash blocks to check that out. But I think Alana and I have discussed together and, and in different places just some really practical ways that you can um, sort of rejuvenate your your prayer life and make it feel less mechanical. So I think we're just going to share some really practical ways if you're feeling stuck or mechanical, how you can make your prayer life a little bit more alive feeling. Yeah. This is the praying Christian women equivalent of throwing a bunch of spaghetti on the wall because, you know, we're not saying that you need to go out and do every single one of these things tomorrow. Right. But, you know, maybe one or two of these things are just things you can keep in your back pocket for when you do feel just kind of stuck or even bored, like, yeah, I get bored praying sometimes. I'm not the only one, I'm sure, but it is hard to admit. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds very unholy to say that. Yeah. So sometimes just changing things up a little bit is great. So yeah, we are, we just want to kind of run through some, some things that you could try. So this one will maybe appeal to you if you're more of a creative type, but like singing a prayer this is something I tried at one point where I would just think, like basically it was stream of conscious singing <laughs> and it felt really weird to do, but it was actually a really neat way to just be open and vulnerable with God also. So, you know, I wouldn't suggest doing this, like, you know, walking down the, you know, the aisle at Target, but maybe, you know, you're home alone or you're in the shower or something try singing out whatever comes to your mind as a prayer to God. I like that. And I play a little bit of guitar, not a whole lot, but enough to play chords and learn some songs. And so I used to love to do that. That was one of my favorite things to do was to sing some worship songs. And then I won't say that I, you know, wrote any really great worship songs on my own, but I just wrote some that I even still sing now, you know, just things that, that were on my heart and they started as poems and then I added music to them. Or sometimes I just did that stream of conscious praying while I played my guitar and it was so therapeutic. Just That's as, awesome. Yeah. And I, I, you don't have to be good. I wasn't good, but it's really yeah. my heart connected with God through that. That's awesome. My mm -hmm. old standbys for spicing up my prayer life is praying through the Psalms. So just, you know, find one randomly or one that you, you know, have read recently or know that you like, or just turn to Psalms and turn them into prayers. So instead of just reading, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want, like pray through that. God, you are my shepherd. Because you are my shepherd, I'm, I'll never be in want. And just turn those Psalms around. You could do it with any Bible passage, but I especially like it for the Psalms when I'm feeling just kind of stuck. Because I feel like, yeah, anything that gets you engaged in worship, I feel is going to just give you that boost to your prayer life, you know? Mm -hmm. I think another really effective way to to shift your brain's gears about prayer is to pray on location. And so maybe um, you're used to sitting in your chair and praying, but walk around your home while you're praying and even incorporate your prayer list. So maybe you have your kids and your husband or your grandkids on your prayer list. Um, but if it's somewhere you can go and actually be physically, um, maybe it's your church be there and walk through your home, pray over your children's rooms. And like by looking around that room, you're going to get clues for areas that you never thought of to pray for, you know, or things that would not have struck a chord before. So you can just um, have a visual input to your output of prayer. And with a church, you know, going to your church early um, before the service or asking your pastor for permission to go to your church and 
walk through the sanctuary and put your hands on the pews or the chairs and pray for people that will be there. Go into the youth room, go into the children's ministry, the office. I mean, wherever Mm -hmm. you feel led. And so just praying on location is a way just visually. And, and it just, it's like, you know, when you're exercising and you do the same routine over and over again, your muscles kind of get bored. So maybe your brain Good point to yeah. shake things up a little to get you re-engaged and not just on autopilot. That's a great point. I had a long wait once at the, um, the DMV and they had like an old country living magazine there. And I'm like, that's, I'm not their target demographic at all, <laughs> but it was all there was. And So what I did was like, I would look at the pictures or even the ads or the headlines and just find something that it could remind me to pray for. So maybe it was like an ad for heart medicine, but I knew that so-and-so from church is grandma had a heart attack, you know, so I could pray for that. So sometimes just taking something that's totally not meant to be a prayer guide and finding a way to turn it into a prayer guide every once in a while. I'll also do this, like looking at um, fine art. And, you know, whether that's, I I do like some abstract art, or I also like some impressionist style things, like looking at a painting and just thinking, okay, so maybe it's a painting of a girl reading a book. And so that's going to remind me of the people who maybe right now as I'm praying or reading one of my novels, so I can pray for them. Sometimes just finding connections, like, okay, when I see this, it can remind me to pray for that. Sometimes that it frees up. I think you just start praying with a different part of your brain, which like you said, Jamie, it's, it's all about brain muscles. And if you're doing the exact same kind of prayer routine every day, it can start to feel kind of dry. Yeah. I really like that. That's a really neat idea. Just like seeing prayer everywhere. I think that's so neat. And I think you will start to train your brain to see remind prayer reminders in things that normally you wouldn't have ever thought of. I think that's a really, really neat way. Mm -hmm. One thing, if you are using a list, which when I hear prayer being mechanical, I think of it being you're praying through a list and you're just going through the motions or you're praying a certain prayer or whatever. You're talking to God and you're saying the same things, you know, without engaging. And if you do have a list and it's become kind of overwhelming and you just feel like you're praying through the the list, if you take all of those names or all of those topics, you could put them into a prayer jar or a prayer whatever, a Mm -hmm. box. And just take out one or two each day randomly and then, you know, take those and put them somewhere else so that you don't feel like you have to pray through the list. You know, maybe you just take one or two and pray for those each day as they're taken out, looking at that as, you know what, this is kind of by chance that I pulled this out, but now I really have this one person to focus on. How many ways can I pray for this person? Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you know, just focusing on fewer people and issues can sometimes um, deepen and and revive the individual prayers that you're praying. It absolutely can. There are times where I have had to go through and cut my prayer list mm-hmm. you know, by over half just because it did get so overwhelming. Yeah. And so, yeah, sometimes it feels bad to do that for sure. But just like James said, I feel like it can help you go deeper in, in what you are praying for. And it doesn't mean that the things that you take off, you never pray for again. It just might mean that Maybe that becomes your once a month prayer list, whereas you keep some things on your once a day prayer list or something like that. There are so many different ways you can kind of organize it out depending on your personality type. And I think that's inviting the Holy Spirit into your prayer life instead of feeling this um, responsibility, like if I don't pray these 10 people's names today, they're not going to get prayed for today. Looking at it instead of... um, that need to pray for those 10 people to say, you know what, God is big enough. He can, it, you know, this is too much. This is okay to, to say, this is too much for me to effectively pray for all these people. God will not do that. He, he's got a lot of resources, you know, according to his riches and glory, he will provide for all the needs of the people that need him. And so to invite the Holy Spirit into being more selective And trusting, being like, wow, they needed this prayer right now. Maybe not tomorrow when I would have prayed for them again. Maybe today was when this person really needed those prayers because the Holy Spirit knows and we don't. That's a really good point. And we can talk too about just asking God to guide you in your prayers. So this isn't exactly prayer related, but I noticed something just about the podcast because I've been recording, you know, usually Jamie and I will jump on and record together. 
but I recorded a couple things on my own now, both for a few of the online prayer retreats and like a few solo episodes for Praying Christian Women podcast. And what I found was like when Jamie and I are going back and forth, you know, unless there's major kid interruptions or internet issues like we were having earlier today, like we just talk back and forth. But when I'm recording by myself, like I'm hitting pause all the time. Like I'll say the one thing that I want to get out and then I'll hit pause. Like, okay, what's coming next? Sometimes it's just to get my voice to break even. But I feel like without that, I would just, my brain would run out of fuel very quickly. Mm -hmm. Like that same thing can happen in our prayers. So instead of just going boom, 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 praying from one thing to one thing to one thing to one thing, it can be really beneficial to pray for your one thing, take a little break and ask God, who do you want me to pray for next? It gives your brain a break. And then it also gives you practice in really listening to God, because I think we would all agree that yes, we want to be effective at praying. And what way to be more effective than to be praying for the things that God specifically wants you to be praying for? Yeah, I definitely agree. Another way, and it goes along with that, is listening, leaving time to listen for God and just kind of lay, um, maybe even take that person from that prayer box or the prayer jar or whatever and, and lay it physically in front of you. And rather than just praying all the things that were on your list to pray for them, maybe ask God for wisdom, how that person needs to be prayed for, and then just be still. And I know for me, that's one of my number one struggles is being still. It's just hard. It's so hard to do. And um, it's uh, just allowing God to guide those prayers because there have been times where I've done that and I don't do it often enough, but when I've done that, and then I've either texted someone or emailed them or called them and said, you know what, I prayed this for you. And it's been just what they needed. It's been exactly what they needed. Whereas I might have prayed down my whole list of stuff for them, which would have been great. And I'm sure that movement was happening in the heavenlies anyway. But um, they were encouraged in a way that only God could orchestrate by giving me that knowledge of what to pray for at that time. So it was a double bonus. You know, they were blessed through the prayer. They were encouraged and God was glorified because it was like, wow, how did you know that? Only God could have done that for me, you know, to tell someone how to pray for me. I don't know. I just think that's listening can, you know, like that pause you were talking about, mm -hmm. Alana, listening can just be really powerful. Yeah. I would say if we want to close with just maybe one more thought each or something, one more that I have at least, I don't know if, if, if you've run out yet, but one idea that we could also throw out there is just to solicit the help of a prayer partner, even if it's not going to turn into like a regular prayer partnership. If you just feel kind of stuck or stalled, or yes, let's go ahead and use the B word if you feel bored with prayer see if there's someone in your life that you can call up and be like, Hey, would you pray with me? It doesn't, you know, maybe there's a specific thing you want to pray for. Maybe you just want someone to pray with because it is a lot easier to keep your mind from wandering when you're praying out loud and hearing someone else pray out loud. And sometimes just that, that act of praying with someone else can just encourage your prayer life and, you know, so it's the benefits last beyond just that time you're praying with that person, you know, like over the next few days, you might, feel in general more invigorated, encouraged, inspired in your prayers. Yeah, I think that's definitely um, the key is, you know, we weren't meant to live in a vacuum. God has given us the body of Christ and other believers for a reason. So I think that's definitely a huge help sometimes when you feel like you're just going through the motions. Um, you know, I think that's a good place to end. I mean, there are other ideas. And if you all have some ideas that you want to share, um, definitely jump in and send us an email or um, if you at connect at prayingchristianwomen.com. Also, um, we have a Facebook group. I don't know if everybody knows about that yet, but we do have a Facebook group. It's a private group, but it's to encourage women in their prayer lives. And you can go to um, Praying Christian Women Community in Facebook and we will get you joined up ASAP, like within 24 hours, you'll be a member, maybe sooner. Oh, are we, are we committing to that? Is it like 24 no. hours or your money back? Mm, yes. Cause it's free. <laughs> well, that works. <laughs> and if you have uh, questions that you want us to cover on some of our coffee break episodes like this, you can send those to praying slash questions. 
All right. Well, we are at the point in our podcast where we like to pray for the unsaved people in our lives. And if you're interested in praying more frequently for the unsaved people that God's placed on your heart, um, you can actually go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved, and you can sign up to get 30 days of prayer for the unsaved, and you get one email a day. So it's kind of like a built-in prayer reminder to help you, and the prayer is written out for you, and we like to read the prayers on the podcast so that you can follow along. Um, so yeah, if you haven't already, just ask God to place on your heart one to three people, like keep it small that you know that need to know the Lord that, um, that don't. So, yeah, so let's pray. Father God, please open the ears of my deaf friend today. Touch my friends so that they can hear your voice clearly and know you for who you are. Let them hear those words of love and forgiveness that you long to sing over them. You long to be gracious to them, Lord. Show them your mercy. Without you, Father, I would still be deaf to your word. Don't let my friend continue on, unable to hear your voice. Open their ears so they can understand who you are and what you require of them. Open their ears so they can be saved and worship you as their Savior, Healer, and King. Amen. Amen. So let's just go ahead and close in prayer. We will be praying for you guys and also for Tammy Lolu, who submitted such a great question that led to such a fun conversation for us. So let's pray. God, thank you so much for allowing us to do this episode. Thank you for Temi Lolu. And I just pray specifically for her and her prayer life that you would give it that passion and vibrancy and connection. And for any other listeners as well, and for Jamie and me also, we just pray for vibrant prayer lives that don't feel repetitive, that don't feel stuck in a rut, but that do have discipline as well. God, just show us that balance of being both disciplined and passionate in our prayer lives, Lord. We just thank you so much for this podcast. We thank you for our listeners and for the encouragement that they are. We thank you for helping us get through this recording with some internet issues. And just thank you for Jamie for being such a great friend, prayer partner, and co-host as well. And we just pray your blessing over everyone listening. Amen.